wakes up early Monday morning and drags her bones out of bed and goes across to the mirror to see the image in her head Oh, this town she lives in Got her back against the wall Oh, this town she lives in Has given her nothing at all She walks down pavement strewn with men Hi, good morning. Welcome back. Now, I think you'll agree there are not many chances in this life to get back the things that you regret you got rid of, the things you should never have sold. How many of us want our very first motorbike back? If you could get that moped you had when you were a teenager and bring it back into your life as a keepsake, you'd buy it tomorrow. I know I would, but mine doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, my Street Fighter bike that I built, the first custom bike I ever built, does exist and I just got the opportunity to buy it back recently. This bike was my P4. I bought this seven years ago from a dealer friend of mine, and over three years, I spent all of that time learning new things I'd never done before. It wasn't about building a bike, it was about growing as a mechanic and a bike builder and putting myself into areas I'd never gone, into uncomfortable places to try and get myself out of them and learn from it. Things like molding that tail, out of clay and then fiberglass and the welding I'd never done before and making unique things and fun stuff so that I could have a bike that was completely unique and all my own work. And I was really happy with it, but unfortunately I sold it to fund the next project and I regretted it the next day. I wish I hadn't sold it, but when the opportunity came up to buy it back just recently, I couldn't resist it. And now it's back in my life and this time I can keep it. So let's have a little look at what's happened to it in the last four years since it's been gone and what we're gonna do with it next. Right, having sold the bike, it's gone through three pairs of hands since I sold it. And each and every pair of hands that have touched it, they've done a little something to it and it has evolved into the bike that has arrived back today. Some of the stuff, as I said, is good and I'm happy with it and some is not and I need to change it. So let's go through the things that certainly are missing since it left our garage. Right, the first thing that's obvious that struck me the minute I saw it is my belly pan's gone. I made a belly pan for this out of a fuel tank. I went online, I bought an old Kawasaki ZX 7R fuel tank that had a little leak in the bottom and I cut the entire base out of it so it was just the top shell. I then inverted it completely upside down so this back hump up here was at the front, just literally rolled it backwards and I managed to mount it on these mounts. The mounts are still there. There's one on there that I welded on and these two at the back, but it's just gone. The previous owner tells me that it just wasn't his kind of taste. He didn't really like it. He wanted it a bit more of a naked look, so he took it off and he did get rid of it, which is a real shame because I could have done something with that, but it's gone, there it is, and I'm not gonna replace it because I don't just wanna restore this to the bike it was when I sold it. I want it to be completely different. But for now, that's the first and most obvious change. Well, the next thing is quite obvious, the mudguard. That's not the original mudguard I put on it. It was a steel mudguard in the conventional shape. I welded some corners on it with some little holes in, which I molded in, and it was all vinyl wrapped with the rest of the bike. That's gone. He decided he didn't like that, so the previous owner has taken it off, and he's used this, which is, I think by looking at it, it's a KTM 390 mudguard. So it's a nice, thick, factory-style mudguard, nice and chunky. And um, where it's been bolted on, the bracket is still under there for this KTM mudguard, but it doesn't quite reach the bottom hole. And as a kind of get you out of trouble thing, he's put a cable tie in the bottom just to secure it. So that's not to the standard I'd want it. So I'll get the cable ties out of the way. I'll make some proper brackets that will hold that in place and that will be repainted in with the rest of the bike. Because I quite like the shape. I do like that a lot. It wants lifting up very slightly. It's a little bit too close to the tire. So some adjustments on that, but otherwise the mudguard definitely has changed. And also this headlight, Anyone recognize that? 
This is a Harley Davidson V-Rod headlight. Now I absolutely love the use of totally alien parts on a custom bike that then subsequently blend in and look fantastic. It's just a kind of happy coincidence that's really cool. And not only that, the efficiency upgrade in using this headlight is off the scale. Because for those of you who followed the original build, you might remember I made a nose cone out of a Harley Sportster tank with a little slot in the bottom and a little light inside it. It wasn't the best for nighttime use, but this definitely is. My nose cone was a celebration of form over function, and this is the other way around. It doesn't look quite as cool, but it definitely works. It's a massive halogen light from a Harley. It's glass as well, so it's good quality. It's got a steel back to it and this little cowl he's made to go over the top to hide all the wiring. So I think that's a fantastic upgrade. I'm definitely gonna keep that. Also, it's held on with these nice solid billet brackets. So that sort of thing is one of the better upgrades this bike has had. I'm really happy with that. But the next thing, well, that's the tail. Thankfully, is still present and original. That hasn't changed. Everything else, I'm no problem with that changing, but the tail, I would have been devastated if he'd taken that away, because that is my favorite part of my bike build. I'll take the seat off for a second. This is how it was when I had it, with no seat pad on it at all. Because I sat on this, this was made out of clay to start with. I made it from modeling clay with wire mesh to support it. I mounted that on the frame, and then I literally sat in it. And my backside shaped that exactly how it needs to be. Perfectly made to measure. And then I just used to ride on the panel. No padding there whatsoever and it was fine because it is the correct shape. That's the critical part, no pressure points or anything. But this rider that didn't fit him so he made the seat. He was also an upholsterer. As you can see, he did a beautiful job of making the seat, but it's too thick for me. I can't ride with that seat on. So we're gonna do something with the seat. I think we will have a seat this time rather than just the bare panel. We'll have something on there probably based around that seat base and some sort of memory foam maybe, something about six mil thick, just enough to give me a bit of padding. We're all getting older, and at the same time, still look quite nice. And this also has had one change, and that's this little light just here. That's very trick. Let's take a close look at that. Now this little green button is a keyless ignition. All you do is take a little fob, place it over the button, and switches the ignition on, and just press the start button. When you want to stop the bike, hit the kill switch, hold it over, switches the ignition off. Simple as that. And the little fob is so innocuous, you can just Velcro that into the cuff of your glove or into the sleeve of your jacket. You can just hold it over there to switch it on or off. What a fantastic little upgrade. And the nice thing as well is that is all wired in to a new dash that I didn't fit either. I'll show you that. Right now, when I had the bike, I had a little bait speedo mounted down here in a little tube. Previous owner took that off and he's mounted a proper digital Street Fighter dash. And these little things are fantastic. I've never fitted one before, never had one on a bike before, but that has as many facilities in it as a modern sports bike. If we switch it on, I'll show you the kind of thing I mean. You can see, it scans through, time, voltage, and it's got, it's been pro when it was fitted, it's been programmed with the bike's correct actual mileage. So we've got 32,650, that's the mileage on the bike. You've also got trip meters and also a lap timer as well. So loads of fun if you're gonna do a track day. And it is effectively a modern dash you'd have in any normal sports bike. Nice piece of kit. All right. Also, when I had the bike, I bought some little Chinese generic indicators which had a front and rear cast to them so you could use them and them only. I got that cleared by the MOT man who's happy with that. But as you can see, what the previous owner or possibly I think the one before him has done is have upgraded to these motor gadgets ones. If I switch that on, as you can see that flashes all the way around. So legally that does flash to front and rear, happy with that. But also as you can see, he's fitted some indicators on the rear as well. So now we've got four indicators all the way around and these motor gadgets, handlebar indicators, look them up. They're ferociously expensive as was this dash and the keyless ignition. So this little investment package here is huge in this bike. Now, in the previous incarnation of this bike, in the long project over those years, I did everything consumable possible, not just the brake pads, chain of sprockets and tires, but also every single bearing, bush and seal on the bike. And of course, upgraded things like the brake reservoir, clutch reservoir, all that sort of thing, add a new clutch in it, the lot. So none of that needs doing. 
In this new project, now with this, I can indulge myself in just a visual makeover. It will get a fluid service at the end, but that's minor. The visual makeover is what we're gonna focus on because everything else is taken care of. This bike has done less than a thousand miles in the three years, it's four years it's been out of my hands. So I don't need to worry about any of that and it's got a full MOT, it passed a couple of weeks ago. So, what do you think? Penny's come up with some amazing ideas for color scheme and I'd like to hear what you've got to say as well. So what do you think? Does a Larry bike, this is structurally a Larry looking bike. So what kind of color scheme goes with that? What do you think? But we are certainly gonna start with the wheels. So in the next video, let's strip the wheels out and prep them up for the paint shop and then we'll be off down the booth in the video after that. Anyway, that's all to come. Enjoy the project. I'll see you in the next one. Long to see better days But the face is switching through the curtains They only long to see out today Oh, this town we live in Has gotten us all to change the other way Oh, this town we live in has got our backs against the wall Oh, this town we live in has given us